We talked about two sets of issues. One was how one could come up with a meaningful and appropriate framework of public policy principles and rules for the increasingly divergent and very vibrant uh, information communications system. Mostly, of course, uh, now epitomized by the internet. And there's two interesting aspects of it. One is that um, in the last 10 years, we see a national divergence uh, of, of approaches again. That is very different from the 1990s, uh, where people thought there was like a best practices model that would actually be applicable across uh, different regions and, and nations worldwide. So there's a new phase of experimentation. Uh, they're all policy experiments, and we don't really know exactly which ones work better than others. We have some limited evidence of that, but no full understanding. But the second interesting uh, aspect is that many of those uh, conventions and rules of engagement that we need in that space are actually not drafted by formal government agencies any longer, but by a bottom-up process uh, in internet governance. And we didn't really go into details of that side because the, the visitors were mostly interested in the government policy side. But um, the coexistence of these two types of policymaking frameworks is very, very uh, important to understand that space. And then secondly, we talked about how the U.S. is actually responding to those challenges of uh, developing an appropriate framework for uh, these communications industries. So this gets you into what you think is particularly important about American policymaking or American communications policy that international uh, practitioners need to know. What, what, what are some of the key differences between U.S. American policy and, and uh, either the East Asia or European practices? Mm -hmm. So one important difference is that the American policymaking framework is much more complicated and multifaceted than any one of these other frameworks. I mean, the, maybe the closest to the U.S. Uh, setup is the European Union. You, know, you have a two-layer approach, although the European Union is not a federal system like the United uh, States. It's more of a confederation. But you do have uh, state-level regulators and then federal or European regulators in Europe, too. But they know that uh, it's very different from the Asian uh, framework, for example, where there's a long tradition of very sort of strong state intervention into those industries. And despite uh, the belief in, in market forces and the trust in innovation and the private sector, there is a willingness for the state to intervene uh, in a very discretionary way. In the U.S., the boundaries to do this because the U.S. court system is very strong and, and has the power to actually uh, reassess any regulatory or legislative choices, and that power goes further than in any other places. Uh, there's more stakeholders because you have 50 states, uh, 51 state regulatory agencies, and the federal agencies that are involved in communications policy making. You have a Congress currently uh, that is very enabled to actually really come up to specific legislative proposals and had difficulties historically to really come up with big new blueprints. So what we see in the United States historically, starting in the 1950s, is a more incremental type of policy development where rules adapt more gradually to changing technology, changing economics, changing user needs. And those big blueprints are relatively rare. Uh, in the European Union, on the other hand, you see a very systematic process of re-evaluating the rules every so often, every five, six years, there's big uh, uh, overhauls and, and communications reviews that then often lead to um, adapted rules at the European level, which then need to be translated to the, to the national level. Uh, and you know, at that, at that translation phase, many aspects of differentiation happen. So the European framework is probably less homogenous than many of the European policymakers at least would like to see. But there is more of a, of a concerted effort to make thorough reviews, which is relatively absent in, in, the, in the American space. Now, in, in, in Asia, on the other hand, although there's a willingness to engage with uh, um, new sector conditions and technology, there is nonetheless a willingness to intervene in very discretionary ways. So a number of our Korean visitors, for example, claim that every new government comes up with a new policy um, and, and none of them really seems to be working well, while the, the, the Korean uh, uh, information communication sector is actually doing very well. And so one last thing I would like to mention is, I think there's a sense in all these regions that we touched upon that the things 
uh, much better on the other side. Kind of. and, and I remember being in Brussels a year ago, and the first speaker was an American who talked about how great the European choices were and that the Americans should become more European. Well, the second speaker was from the, from the commission in Brussels and argued that Europeans should become more like Americans because <laughs> Americans knew how to innovate in that space and so forth. And the reality is actually somewhere in between. Right? The reality is more complex and more multifaceted. And that's what we talked about for a large part of our session. I guess, well, just to conclude, I would just wonder if this kind of, uh, is it a sort of the American way to have much more incremental piecemeal policy making rather than a rational, comprehensive approach? Or is there a chance that the US might have a, a really more comprehensive view of, say, a, a rewrite of the Communications Act? Mm -hmm. It is Ameri the American way in as far as the American institutions, of course, reflect you know, the American political choices over the past several hundred years, even if you want. Currently, I think it's unlikely that this big overhaul will take place at the legislative layer. Although, you know, the regulatory agencies to some degree have filled the void and tried to come up with those fundamental principles. So one of the big discussions in the US currently, which we also talked about in, in, in our seminar, is the question of openness of the internet, uh, epitomized under the term of net neutrality, for example. And here, I think the Federal Communications Commission is really doing the right thing by trying to come up with a set of rules that, that avoids that the sector deteriorates too much into a concentrated market, while at the same time, it doesn't buy the argument of some of the content providers that every bit is a bit is a bit. I mean, this is a very um, heterogeneous now uh, system of services that, that are delivered over the internet, you know, with very different characteristics and some kind of uh, differentiation makes good sense from an engineering and computer science and even freedom of speech perspective. And the question is, will, will it be possible to come up with feasible rules in, in, in that regard? Um, the US framework is in some sense is unique now because the US has gone further than any other country with regard to letting uh, decentralized decision making at least try a first stab on how to work out those rules. So market-based uh, approaches are very, very widespread and much more, the US has been much more radical than other places. So example, broadband unbundling has been more or less eliminated. So the US has gone more radically than any other nation toward more market-driven, um, more market-driven framework in that space. And it has advantages and disadvantages. And, and I think those are, now more clearly available and visible. So the US, for example, has been able to stimulate investment into new infrastructure and also has a very vibrant uh, innovation culture in, in, in the IT industry. Think of Facebook and Google and Amazon. These are all American companies. Um, at the same time, market forces only work under certain conditions. So the US has a very um, uneven accessibility of infrastructure. So in, in rural areas, in sparsely populated areas, there's much less uh, supply available than you would find, let's say, across the European Union in most cases. And so, so we see, you know, the market, market forces actually have done exactly what one would anticipate they do, and they have failed in other areas. And, but the US in the last couple of years then has rejuvenated its idea of universal service and has modernized those rules to uh, include broadband and, and digital uh, divide issues more more explicitly, and has made funding available to fix those those issues. Thank you very much. <laughs>